would do something kind of fun. I thought I would do a variation on the cheap art supply challenge using Crayola twistables and some line art I completed. Um, the line art is not necessarily part of the challenge itself. Um, I had thought about using a pencil with these or even a ballpoint pen, but I really didn't want to go that far because honestly, I hate inking with a ballpoint pen. So I have the 24 pack of twistables. I bought them for um, a presentation I was doing at the library because they are one of the libraries in my hometown of Luling and uh, they had supplies of their own. So I didn't need to use them. <laughs> And I haven't done any swatching yet, but they feel like they go on pretty smooth. They seem a little bit waxier than regular Crayola crayons. Um, they have, they're kind of um, short. These, are these the minis? No, it doesn't say that. Well, um, they're a little bit short, but they're also a little bit um, harder than regular crayons, but they feel creamier going down, if that makes sense. And I'm using um, a Strathmore Visual Art Journal with the vellum Bristol finish. And this was sort of inspired by all of the artists on YouTube who I see do beautiful um, art with Crayolas or just crayons in general. What's ironic is the pack of 24 really only has two skin tones. It's got a chalky peach and um, a very dark brown. You would think with all these colors, they would try to have um, at least another, one other skin tone. But I think this is gonna be like my eternal complaint when it comes to like uh, consumer grade or uh, children's grade art supplies is that there's always a lack of interesting skin tones. That is something though I would like to see is Crayola do, um, they do it with the markers, but not the super tips. Um, only with the, um, the sort of fat tipped ones that are aimed at kids, the multicultural colors, um, considering how popular adult coloring books or coloring books for adults are, you would think they would introduce some multicultural packs for that as well. So I guess I'm going to get started with her skin and I haven't used Crayola's um, as a serious art supply in like 10 plus years. And this peach is going down pretty smooth though. Of course, if I was using colored paper or a tone paper, um, this would really stand out, I think especially a tone paper with a tooth to it. And I don't wanna build up too much wax on the surface just yet, cause I need somewhere to go. And I actually am not 100% sure what I'm going to use to shade the skin, cause there isn't a darker skin tone other than this very dark brown. So um, that should be interesting. Even just like a tan or a saddle brown, just something in between the two would be nice. But this is a complaint of an adult and a professional artist who's used to having more access to uh, skin tones and earth tones. So maybe I ought to go back to like a uh, seven year old thinking and just be excited by all the colors. They actually feel a little bit slippery on this paper. I'm not sure if it's the paper or if it's uh, the twistables. But they're fairly comfortable in my hand and they're a little bit bigger than, um, than regular sized uh, color pencils or coloring utensils. So let's see if I can blend that out. So I'm pressing harder on this um, layer to try and blend some of the the like reddish color I <laughs> put down, reddish color. Um, it's probably like a scarlet red. To blend some of the scarlet red I just put down. Do these have names on the barrels? No, maybe on the back of the container though. Anyway, trying to blend some of that scarlet red into the skin, make it less striking. 
And uh, even though I'm pushing down a bit harder with this peach tone, it's really not getting much darker. So there isn't a whole lot of variation you can do, at least on white paper, because this peach color is so, so light. I like it's light. I'm pretty fair and it's lighter than my skin. So I don't know who they think has skin that color. So I'm going to try and add some cast shadow to the face with this sort of magenta purple. And I'll use the peach again to sort of blend that out. Although I've already put so much peach down and it's a little bit hard to get the purple to layer on top of it on this paper. So if you're going to recreate this experiment, you're going to need something with a little more tooth. Honestly, newsprint might be a good paper for this. These would actually probably be pretty fun for field sketching now. If only there were more um, like browns. But the greens aren't that bad. The yellows, um, you could really benefit from like a greenish yellow, like a, a lemon hue kind of thing. And since these aren't meant for mixing, you're really gonna need some uh, convenience colors like an indigo or a, uh, a like a Payne's gray. Has anybody um, like used these sort of things for? I'm sure somebody has. Have any of you guys used these for like urban sketching? If so, let me know. I'm interested to see how they turned out because it's a really compact set. I mean, it's not meant to take a whole lot of abuse and there's only so much you can really do with some of these colors, but you know, it's an interesting idea and it's kind of low maintenance, low mess. And I mean, like pretty much every store, even I bet some gas stations have a set of crayons that you could pick up. Of course, then you're like me and you get like attached to a particular brand because they perform marginally better. And then when you can't get a hold of them, you're all upset. face is very purple. That's my fault. It's because this is, oh, I'm off camera. This is such a pale color. Just doesn't have any oomph to it. And I don't have anything better with which to like sort of blend this out. I guess I could if I really wanted to, and I really wanted to break this challenge, I could go get the spray fixative and like give myself a new layer. Another, uh, it's not really a problem so much as it's just something to keep in mind if you're interested in these for um, like field sketching, is you can't really do fine details because I mean, it doesn't even have like a crayon sharp tip, but I bet you could attempt to sharpen them in a pencil sharpener, especially like a little handheld one, just to get a slightly better point than what you have. I might also be though the queen of bad ideas today. So that could like potentially shatter the whole uh, crayon inside really just depends on the wax they're using and it feels fairly like a fairly hard wax you also want to be careful about like the stray crayon flex There's something very soothing, even doing it on camera, there's something very soothing about doing a piece where it doesn't matter if it looks good or if it turns out okay. Where you're just experimenting with something. So if you feel like you're in kind of a rut and uh, your art's not improving or you're bored with your materials or whatever, not having good ideas, um, 
whatever constitutes as a rut for you, um, why not pick up something uh, unusual or that you haven't used in a really long time and just noodle around with it? Since you're just playing around, there's no... Um, there should be less of a need for it to come out perfect. So if you struggle with being too hard on yourself or your work, um, it can be very freeing to work with materials um, you're not familiar with. On a paper like this that doesn't have a whole lot of tooth going on, it is difficult to build up layers because after like the second layer, and they blend okay actually, but after the second layer there's just nowhere for the wax to go. And if I'm going to be ridiculous, I might as well just go all the way. Well, that was like my first attempt in 10 years at using Crayola crayons. Um, if you enjoy stuff like this, I recommend you watch or rather you read my blog, natasoup.blogspot.com, because right now I have an affordable art supply mega series going on. Um, I've already covered Walmart, which includes brands like um, Crayola or uh, De La Rowney, Simply Watercolors, or Royal Langnickel. I've also done Target, so I've done a lot of up and up products, and I'm even doing Dollar Tree. So I hope you guys check those out um, and let me know what you think. I'm Becca Hilburn. I hope you have a great day. Bye, guys.